A great camp starts with a great campsite. Obviously, you're looking for a smooth, flat spot, but not a level one, because you don't want to put the tent where water might puddle, nor do you want to put it where trees or tree branches might fall on it. Here's a nice spot, has good drainage, and we can sleep with our heads slightly uphill. It's always best to start with the poles first. It's a pretty nice day, so you can see that I haven't taken the time to check and see where their stakes will go in or whether I have to gather big piles of rocks or whatever. If it was windy, you'd want to have all your anchors ready to go so the tent doesn't get carried away. Assemble the poles right straight up. This also helps keep sand out of the joints. Moonlight tents have one long gold pole and two shorter green poles. Those two green poles actually assemble together where the long end of one goes into the socket of the hub of the other. And that forms the eye pole shape. Here's how that looks on one end. Then you walk the pole back to the other end so you can attach that hub together. And it goes like this. You get the hub in one hand and the end of the other pole in the other hand. Brace the other end of the pole against something solid. Then flex the eye pole into shape and put the other end in the socket. Put the poles aside and now it's time to work with the inner tent. As you can see, it's a pretty nice day. There's not much wind. So we can be pretty reckless about exactly how we take the tent out and what we do when. If conditions were really bad, of course, we have the option of pitching the rainfly first. There's another fairly short video for that one. You can see I'm taking full advantage of the fact that all the corner stakeouts are adjustable so I can get the tent nice and tightly pulled down to the ground. In fact, it's a little too tight. I have to loosen it a little bit later. Ah, stake doesn't go in here. Let me show you how to use a rock. It's really easy. You take the loop end and you turn it into a slip knot just by doing that right there. So now it's just a big open slip knot and you can stick a stick or a rock through it so that can become your anchor. And the best rock anchor isn't to just leave it tied around a rock like that. It's actually to kind of use it as a jam nut kind of a thing. So you take an even bigger rock and do that. Slick. Okay, time to put the poles in. First pole to go in is the gold one. So you grab one end of it and you find one of the corners that's marked with gold web and you pop the end in. Pop in the other side and then do a few of the clips. The ones that go on the hubs are especially good to do early. Green pole goes in the same way. One of the neat things about moonlight tents, and one of the things that makes them really strong, is that the poles actually lock together. And you can do that operation pretty much any time. Clip the other end of the green pole to the tent corner, and then before you do the other clips, do the clips that go to the hubs. And they're actually kind of special. They're called H clips, and they look like this. And the regular clips look like that. Do the other clips the same way. And you'll be done in a GIF. Here's a close-up of a couple of the little plastic parts that are making this all work. First is a line lock, so you can adjust the cord like this. The second is an X-Lite buckle. It's rated to a little over 100 pounds. Very nice small buckle. And then we have the Jake's foot, which is how the poles are attached. Time to put on the rainfly. The rainfly is symmetrical, so you can put any rainfly door in front of the tent door, and it's right. If 
Well, that's pitching the tent, but let me show you a few other little things. The wind actually did come up quite a bit later on, and so we had to tie it down a little more. One of the first things we did is we actually made the stake loops go around as a double loop around the stakes. So that way it can't slide off the top by accident. Then we peeled up the rain fly and went back and did the velcro loops that attach to the poles. So the rain fly is attached directly to the poles. And last but not least, we took those awesome Dyneema guy lines out of their little pouches and used them. The guy lines have a very slick little adjuster called a phantom cord adjuster. Let me show you those real quick in case you haven't seen them before. They're on the end of the cord, so that means you can actually put it around things like trees. It attaches by just wrapping around. Then you slide it. Here's that again. You pop it in, you wrap it around, and slide it. Done. Slick. Then go play. We left this thing pitched for four days without touching it.